My name is Emily. Welcome to my winter garden. I have a great show planned for you today. So grab your coat. It's pretty cold outside. If you got a saw, bring it along because I'm going to introduce you to a real woodsmith as we go back in time to a wonderful profession. See you in a minute. Born on a mountaintop in Tennessee, green estate in the land of the free. Raised in the woods so he knew every tree. Killed him a bar when he was only three. I'm with Christopher Hover, who is located in Coventry, Rhode Island. Has a great place here. Met him a few hundred years ago by now. Thanks for letting me come in today. I was on your website not too long ago, and I was really surprised to find out that you were a chef before all of this. Yeah, I was a, in restaurants a total of 18 years and started uh, very early, 15 years old. Made a beeline for that career and was serious about it. And then took up hunting as a hobby and was in the woods and thought, when I was a little boy, I wanted to work in the woods. And that started the wheels turning to maybe consider changing. And I changed uh, like 10 years ago and it's been a good fit. Uh, it, my chef career was also a good fit but this is, fits my skin very well. This place is absolutely gorgeous. You're in for a treat. As I look around, I see all kinds of works of art. You are a very talented man, sir. I remember this mirror. Again, I met Chris quite a few years ago, uh, Farmer's Village. Little peddler come in with his <laughs> furniture, you see. <laughs> and I bought that piece was one of them. Yeah. I have a couple more left, but I've kind of stopped making them. When I first started, I had more enthusiasm than technique, and this does all the work. I didn't make that. Nature made that. My work celebrates nature. This is apple, and apple trees often are hollow, and it makes the nicest mirror because this is usually always a nice color, and then the inside is always a nice color. And uh, Those were, when I first started, easy to make in the sense that I didn't have technical abilities like I do now. And, you certainly uh, do. As I look around, it's incredible. And this is only one building. My philosophy is the same in, in that when I was a chef, I had an expression, let the food do the work. Get good ingredients and let the food do the work. Get the best flavored chicken or the best flavored meat or the best flavored vegetables and just let the flavor do the work. Enhance them, present them attractively. And so with what I do now, it celebrates nature and by and large the materials are are presented in their natural form and so the materials do the work in a sense. I just present them in a way. I, guess. I have a little phrase that I think that I coined actually and it's very much the same concept. I call it free flow form. Say that three times fast. But basically that's exactly what it is. When I'm working with a piece of material I let it do its natural thing. The flow. It's always there. I can see it with all of your pieces here. I'm really surprised to see that you even do walls. Yeah, that's a lovely texture. That's ash bark, which has a nice texture, and it's an alternate to birch bark. I wanted to break things up a little bit. I use a lot of birch bark, and birch bark is in itself a beautiful material in that it has the white face and varying degrees of shade and texture, but it also the tan side is very rich looking. A pleasure to work with. Even the windows, the way they're framed, they're just absolutely lovely. Oh, I, I look at the world a little differently, obviously. I think that milled so wood is so sterile looking, and I think that this is more textural, and it's exciting. It brings me joy to see these things and be around them. Hopefully it brings the joy to the customers. I have to ask, I notice that everything here is really, it's all centered, and I'm sure everything is even. However, you're working with uneven wood. Mm. How difficult is that? It's great for me because I am tortured by convention. This is freedom of presenting it. The twigs need to be typically straight, but if, you're, if they're not, you can make a splice and sort of fake it. Um, there's ways to make it look, you know, perfect, even though it isn't. It's uh, not always the goal. There are artists in this medium who are high quality, m perfection, straight looking, and then there are other people who have a really keen sense of letting something be unkempt and organic and really wild. Everyone's eye or everyone's approach is different and it's unique. When I used to do classes, we would all start out with the same mediums. If it was a wreath, we would have maybe a bundle of status, maybe some grapevine. And I would show them, there'd be a prototype of what we were going to do. But they were all different at the end. It was always a self-expression. Some of them, just like you said, you could almost tell what their personality was. Mm. Some were neat 
and very well shaped. Others were all over the place, but the end result was they were all really beautiful. I tend to make functional items. I tend to make things that are not raw art in the sense that they're just to look at. Yeah. You can use them as well. I believe the definition of art is, as, as I interpret it, is something that causes a reaction in you. And so when you think of a piece of art, it makes you go, wow, or ew, or holy smokes, how did they even do that? Or how did they even think of that, let alone execute that? And so the things that I make are creative, artistic, but they're not art in a sense because they're functional. I make decorative shelving or benches or uh, an arbor or something, and it's not like a sculpture where it's raw in that sense. I think it probably varies with a lot of your pieces too because I can see some abstract within the functionality mm. of it all. We're gonna take a little walk around and see some more sure. of your property if sure. that's okay I can, uh, with you. That's fine. I had to finish the two pieces of furniture that are custom for some folks. I'm just down to the last part. The, the drawer fronts are going to be decorated with twigs, and I, then I put a little knob in the front. Usually at the end of the day, when I leave the shop, I put the urethane on. At this point, I need to put a little bit of a twig decorative mosaic work, and I use uh, split twigs that are harvested in the winter. Two varieties, yellow birch and also black birch. It's a hard, hard wood, and the bark stays on if they're cut and dried in the winter. I love the way this is rough cut here. And then it slides in nicely. Yep. Voila. I try to make my furniture look more or less normal in that that's the same height and the same size as a coffee table, but it has the rustic flavor or the natural touches that make it attractive in, in a different way. This place is really full of eye candy, but we're going to take a short break, catch you into the next workshop, and we're going to finish up in his lawn cabin. See you in a minute. Okay, we've gone out into the yard now, and this place is absolutely huge. It's unbelievable. What do we got here, Chris? These are uh, red cedar poles. Well, you're very organized. I see they're all in different sizes. You have different piles of maybe some wood with character. I really admire your lifestyle. My show was never intended to be a how-to gardening show. It really is all about lifestyle because I firmly believe that it all goes back to the earth in some way. Property. I caught a glimpse of a cabin out yonder. So if you grab my hand, <laughs> we're gonna pop over there. You ready? Robin Hood and Little John walking through the forest, laughing back and forth at what the other has to say. Reminiscing this and that and having such a good time. Oodle lolly, oodle lolly, golly, what a day. And I'll see you back at Emily's Garden in just a minute. Welcome back to my cabin. I had a great time today. Now I want to show you a few pieces. I think you might find some enjoyment in making for Christmas presents this year. Chalkboard paint. It turns any surface into a chalkboard. Think about it. A stick chalkboard you can leave on the counter for your children. Little notes when they come home from school. Any good paint store should be carrying this. Chalkboard paint is latex based and turns virtually any interior surface into a chalkboard. Or maybe you just want to make a slate. Preparation is easy. The surfaces should be clean, dry, and free of wax, grease, dust. Hard, glossy areas should be dulled and sandpapered to ensure proper adhesion. If you want to make a frame, cut out any piece of wood. You can see I'm not too exact, but when it's finished, it all seems to work. Go out in the woods, grab some sticks. Lots of things you can do with these. Even made some shutters. Maybe you have a handsaw, maybe you don't. Maybe you can get somebody to cut it for you. Measure it. Just throw a screw in there or a nail if you have it. As you can see with this one, I decided to make a little stand for it. This is just a rough surface. Make sure you put your newspaper down. Mix it up. You may have to give it a couple of coats. Paint up that wood. Voila. How cool is that? After you let it dry, get yourself some chalk and write yourself a little message. We part until we meet again. See you next time here in Emily's Garden. <laughs>